Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Madame la Présidente, euh, Excellence euh, Ambassadeur euh, Jade, euh, Jade Fell, Excellence, euh, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, Excellence, Mesdames et Messieurs les Ambassadeurs, Honorables Membres du Conseil d'administration, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais commencer naturellement par vous remercier, Madame la Présidente, pour l'efficacité par laquelle vous avez dirigé cette élection, dont le processus a été mené à son terme avec brio, avec professionnalisme, avec rigueur, en dépit des contraintes que nous impose la COVID-19. Il nous faut tous ici saluer la grande transparence et la sincérité de cette élection. Permettez-moi aussi de rendre hommage aux, aux autres candidats qui se sont engagés dans cette compétition pour l'élégance qui a caractérisé leur campagne. Et je salue ici leur mérite. Je suis profondément reconnaissant aux membres du conseil d'administration pour la confiance qu'ils ont placée à moi pour diriger cette organisation pour les cinq prochaines années. Du haut de cette tribune et avec toute la solennité qui s'impose, je promets à vous tous et à vous toutes que je ne ménagerai aucun effort pour être à la hauteur des attentes des mandants de l'OIT. Dear Director General, dear Guy Ryder, upon your election to this office in 2012, you committed to making ILO central to meeting the challenges of our fast moving times. And indeed, so you have. I really want to pay tribute, although I'm sure I will have more time to do so. Let me anticipate by paying tribute to your unbending effort to place the ILO and the human-centered feature of work at the center of the global policy debate, thereby demonstrating that decent work and social justice represent the only path to truly sustainable development and peace. And I also, in a very selfish way, want to thank you to have given me the chance, the opportunity to join ILO in 2013. And that, for me, was and remained priceless. Honorable members of the governing body, dear colleagues, the outcome of this election carries a rich symbolism. Your choice today, member of the governing body, fulfills the aspirations of a young African, a young African boy whose humble upbringing turned into a lifelong quest for social justice. It also marks for an entire region, a region that did not have a seat at the table when ILO constitution was drafted in 1919. Its readiness to lead the way in a united effort to act on the principle enshrined in the Declaration of Philadelphia that labor is not a commodity. A great thinker once said, history is the work of people. With this election, you, member of the governing body, you have made history. I am deeply 
and personally honored to be the first representative of the Africa region to be selected to lead the ILO after 103 years. I wish to thank deeply my own government of Togo, as well as all African member states and the African Union and Africa Commission for their relentless uh, effort in put forward my candidacy. Although my origins are African, my perspective is global. In an age, unfortunately, of divisiveness, my commitment to be a unifying director general stand firm. Elections are now over. I will be the Director General of Nobody and the Director General of Everybody. Government, employers, and workers alike from all regions across the world can rely and should rely on my total readiness to represent and advocate the views of all tripartite constituents of the organization. Above all, I commit to represent the voices of those who rely on us in ILO. I'm thinking about the four billion people around the world who do not have access to social protection. I'm thinking about the 200 plus million of women and men who face unemployment, the 160 million children in child labor, the 1.6 billion of people in the informal sector, the enterprises, particularly the small and medium-sized enterprises that are facing drops in demand, supply chain disruption, or closure due to crisis, including the pandemic, including climate change and armed conflict. I'm thinking about the women and men who face discrimination, violence, and harassment on the workplace and elsewhere. These are all expressions of unacceptable social injustice that we are morally, if not legally, bound to address. As I prepare for the mandate you have bestowed upon me, I will be guided by the same vision that has underpinned my entire campaign, a vision anchored in decent work agenda of jobs, social protection rights, and social justice, in one word, anchored around the Centenary Declaration. Distinguished delegates, my election as Director General takes place during a troubled moment in history, a moment of uncertainty for what the future might hold. And at such a moment, the ILO's obligation, as it has been for over a century, must be to resolutely insist on its basic values, our common values of peace, our common values of social justice, and our common values of solidarity. Ever since the constitution of ILO was founded on the principle that universal and lasting peace can be established only if it's based upon social justice, the ILO has remained committed to the principle of tripartism and social justice in order to counter instability and injustice. I have no doubt that together we will meet the expectation of our tripartite constituent and the people we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I know my celebration time will be short, and I'm eager to roll up my sleeves and quickly get to work. In the coming month, the coming month should offer us the first opportunity to initiate consultation on the future plans and priorities. I will be working very, very closely with DG Guy Ryder and the current uh, um, colleague in the uh, um, ILO administration, the staff, the staff union, and of course, with all of you board members in order for us to have a short and smooth transition process. With the daunting challenge ahead of us, the world that the world is facing today, we certainly do not have time to lose. By working together, we shall be able to position the ILO at the higher level where it deserves to be. Indeed, the world needs an ILO that is capable of solving real life problems of the working people and the enterprises. Senora Presidente, estimados miembros of the uh, del Consejo de Administración, creo que esta no es el momento adecuado para profundizar en los detalles. Tendremos muchas oportunidades en los próximos meses para hacerlo juntos. Pero quisiera cerrar esta breve alocución compartiendo con ustedes que hoy marca un momento muy especial en mi vida y en mi carrera profesional. No puedo expresar la sensación de gratitud que siento en este momento. A partir del primero de octubre, iniciaremos un proyecto, que, un proyecto común que tiene el potencial de generar un cambio importante y transformador en el mundo del trabajo. Me gustaría agradecerle nuevamente la confianza que me han brindado y asegurarle que haré todo lo que sea humanamente posible para cumplir con su Extra, eh, expectaciones. Estoy convencido, estoy convencido de que todos juntos, trabajadores, empleadores y gobiernos, hombres y mujeres, abriremos una página esperandora de la historia de la OIT. I thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Director General-elect. And again, I offer my warmest uh, congratulations to your appointment as a Director General of the ILO for a five-year term with re effect from 1st of October 2022 to 30th of September 2027.